Thanks for joining me today on this episode of the Whitetail Watch, produced by Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, hopefully you're looking forward to a, a great holiday with family and food. Uh, that's why I love Thanksgiving. I like to eat and I like to be around family. So this is a, one of my favorite holidays of the year. Plus it comes during a really prime time of the hunting season, which we're going to talk about next. But first, I want to talk about what we've been seeing and then uh, we can move past that after we hear from our sponsors into some strategies you know as we look at the week ahead we have not been seeing much really for action the trail cameras have been you know not kicking out many buck photos very few daytime photos almost no mature bucks on camera uh, mine are in uh, kind of trail funnels like open gates and sitting on scrapes and even though the scrapes are getting some activity it's by smaller bucks and uh, the mature bucks just aren't, uh, you know, they aren't on there. And they aren't going through the, the travel funnels either. So where are they? Uh, where, where have they been? Um, you know, as we talked about last week, with this part of the rut, the, so many of the does are in estrus that the bucks don't have to go very far to find the next one. They can either, you know, find another doe, you know, hold up in the thick cover someplace or they can go steal one from a different buck that's already found one. But they don't have to work too hard, the mature bucks don't, you know, to find another hot doe. So you just don't see them moving. Uh, you know, they're, they're holed up, the does aren't moving, they don't want to be chased around by every buck out there, so they're sticking to the thick cover. You know, they're not really leaving their beds hardly. The bucks know where to find them, so that's where it's all taking place. So if you've been hunting around doe bedding areas, you might have gotten lucky during this past week and been there when you know, the right buck was either between does or maybe you caught a hot doe that dragged a few bucks past. But other than that, it was a really hard week. Uh, we didn't kill anything during this past time frame. We had almost no encounters with mature bucks. In fact, you know, I haven't seen anything really and Ethan's been really struggling too. Uh, so, and a lot of my friends too are saying the same thing, the people I'm talking to at the, at the sports shop and, and those kind of places. So overall for us, it's been really slow. So what does that mean now as we look forward to this coming week? Uh, there's a great opportunity here, I feel like. In fact, one of my favorite parts of the season is this week that's coming up. But first, let's hear from our sponsors and then we'll dive into the strategies that make a lot of sense for the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, well, let's say for Thanksgiving and the weekend of the 25th and the 26th of November. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Code of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. The breeding phase of the rut should be uh, dying down now. You know, we've talked about when that timing occurs with the peak being somewhere around the middle of November in most states in the central United States with the bell curve, you know, with the number of does coming into estrus ramping up on the front end of that, peaking around the 15th, and then dropping back off on the back end of that. Well, we're on the back end now. We're on that part of, uh, of November or that part of the breeding cycle when most of the does have been bred and the bucks are still actively looking for those last few remaining estrus does. And, you know, it's tempting to think that this part of the rut is gonna be as dynamic and action-packed as the early part, but the 25th of November is definitely not the same as the 5th of November. Uh, there aren't as many bucks that are still participating in the rut. It's mostly the mature bucks now that it's just a matter of taking care of business. I mean, they understand the fact that their, their job is to find those does, those last remaining does, and, and breed them, whereas the younger bucks have kind of given up. They've either gotten beat up and had does stolen from them, and you know, there, there just has, hasn't worked out quite as well as they had hoped it had or hoped it would, and now they're just wore out and, and uh, they've kind of given up on the rut. But the mature bucks are still active. So that's the good news. Um, there's still an opportunity here. And you don't have to hunt a whole lot differently than what you did on the front end of the rut, except there's another opportunity that opens up. So let's talk about, you know, first like morning strategies we focused on hunting around doe bedding areas, if not right in them, at least on the fringes of them or the, the funnels between two doe bedding areas. 
And that's still a good overall morning strategy. But if you've been doing that for the past three weeks, there's a pretty good chance you started to burn some of those spots out. Uh, if not, then that's a good, you know, it's a good opportunity, a good place to hunt. Um, and that's, I'm still gonna do it. But this morning hunting around the doe bedding areas isn't near as productive in my mind as the, as the afternoon hunting around the food sources. We've talked about how wore out these bucks get. I mean, the rut is really stressful. I mean, it takes a lot out of them. They're doing a lot of chasing, you know, day and night. There's not much time for rest and very little time for eating. So they, they burn a lot of calories and lose a lot of weight. Uh, I've heard biologists say that they lose as much as 10 to 15% of their body weight during the rut. So they've got to put that back on again, or at least some of it before the winter comes because in some parts of the country, you know, life and death really depends upon them, you know, getting back to food, uh, replenishing, you know, their fat, their fat layer, you know, getting something back into them so that they can withstand this cold winter. So they're a lot more um, aggressively seeking the food now than they were on the front end of the rut. The back end of the rut in the afternoons is really about the food and the bucks aren't even necessarily going there 100% to find does. They're going there to eat and then they'll look around a little bit. Maybe they'll eat for 15 or 20 minutes and then move on you know, and go look for some does. But they're finding the food and a lot of times they're finding it during daylight. So that's the beauty of this coming week. You know, Thanksgiving holiday this year falls a little bit later in November. Uh, it's perfect timing for this. But again, like I mentioned, there is still that, that uh, effort on their part to find the next hot dough or the last hot dough. And uh, that does make them move a little bit more in the mornings than you would on a strict late season feeding pattern, which we're gonna have you know, later as we get into December and January. So mornings, uh, if you're gonna hunt mornings, still being around you know, wherever the does are concentrated, you know, doe bedding areas, uh, funnels in between them, and then uh, you know, the evenings are gonna be really around the food. And that's my, that's my focus now. I've been waiting uh, for several weeks for this coming week. And uh, you know, I'm gonna be with family quite a bit, you know, so I'm not gonna hunt every single day, uh, but I'm gonna get out whenever the weather is, is right. And uh, hopefully I'll have some opportunities you know, I need a north wind for the spot that I'm excited about hunting. And we do have some of that in the, in the forecast. We've got uh, cooler temperatures coming. Uh, everything looks pretty good from that standpoint. Uh, it shouldn't be any warm ups. You know, maybe in the deep south, there could be some problems with weather patterns. But throughout most of the central United States and up into Canada, uh, this time frame looks pretty good for you know, consistently cool. And, uh, and that, that's gonna you know, keep the deer moving towards food, like I said, in the evenings. And uh, that's, that's what the plan should be, I think. Um, like I said, I mean, I've been banking on this for several weeks now, and I'm excited about the opportunity that late November offers. The only problem comes if you've had a lot of hunting pressure in the area where, you know, where you're hunting. And that could come if the firearm season has been open for a while, or if it's just opening. Thanksgiving weekend is gonna bring a lot of people out again that maybe otherwise wouldn't be hunting. And you almost have to treat it like it's another opening day. You almost have to be set up near the thicker cover and let the other hunters move the deer. Um, because again, it's sort of a, a time when people get together, families get together, you know, let's go deer hunting for you know, a few hours this morning um, or maybe this weekend. You know, so it does have a lot of that same feel to it as what the opening weekend does. But if you're in an area where the hunting pressure either has started to die off or, you know, like me, the firearm season hasn't even opened yet, um, you can fall back on these natural movement patterns that I've been talking about. So hopefully this has helped you. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, hopefully you are too. Well, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you have a great Thanksgiving and I look forward to seeing you right back here again next week for the next episode of the Whitetail Watch produced by Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.